So I had a very complicated relationship with money and being poor because my parents, every fight they ever had in their life was over money. It was about money, right? You grew yeah, up poor was, wanting to be rich. Exactly. Yeah. And I wanted to be powerful and rich when I was a kid. And looking back on it, the reason I wanted to be powerful and rich is was because I was poor and I had no power. Mm. And I, it was very complicated for me. And then the money transferred. And I re, my wife remembers the story, and I remember the story like it was yesterday. I was sitting there refreshing my Bank of America account, the corporate account, and nothing, nothing, nothing. And then, boom, 27 million bucks. And I start crying. Sure. And my wife goes, well, why are you crying? I said, I don't have to worry about money ever again. Ever. You'd never and have to worry so again. it was so scary for me to be poor for so long that I just had this incredible cathartic release. And then I went to Silicon Valley, and when I started making noise up there, all these obnoxious rich people were like, I'm not in it for the money. You know, I do venture capital because I'm passionate about changing the world. I was like, fuck you. You have all the money. That's why you're saying it's not about the money. If it wasn't about the money, why are you raising these huge funds and taking these huge management fees? And like, it's obviously this is all about the money. Sure. But that's but, not cool to say. You want to be a little bit. Yeah, more, everybody's a pretentious asshole sure. and like, oh, it's not about the money. Present like, company excluded. It's obviously about the money, right? Like, why they call it money? Like, you need it to do things. And um, so it's not the be all end all, but I had a very complicated relationship where, and you know, when you make your first 10 million, it takes the edge off. Of course, I know it's obnoxious to say, but I can say without being obnoxious, I hope, because I spent the majority of my life broke. How much of that is an understatement? This is taking the edge off. $20 million is not taking the edge off. That's real money. You never have to work again. You never have to do anything yeah. that other people don't want you to do ever again. Yeah, it, it will fuck with your mind a bit if right. you don't have a stable foundation. I'm, I feel lucky because I grew up with a very stable foundation and... I've never really cared about the money in the sense of making a lot of it. What I cared about was not being poor. And then if you look at the psychological studies, they say once people get, they're like, oh, money can't buy happiness. And like all the statistical studies are like, poor people are really fucking unhappy. It's yeah. like, oh, shocking. Really? It like sucks 100, to be poor. Yeah. And it's like, the number was 70,000. And mm. I don't know if, you know, obviously by region it's going to be different. But when people get past $70,000 a year in income, they don't have this, underlying anxiety. Right. It starts to, what is that, a exponentially taper off. Of course, yeah, because happiness. the truth is, like, I have four Teslas. I drive one at a time. I can't drive four Teslas at once, and Not nor yet. does it matter. And by the way, the one I drive is the cheapest one, the Model 3, because it's the best one, paradoxically. And if we all eat a hamburger, and Mark Cuban was here, and Elon was here, and I'm here, and you're here, and... It's the same hamburger, and we all enjoy it equally. So 99% of the best things in life really are not correlated with capital. Um, it's when you don't have it, and you have that underlying fear, and you can't take chances. And that's really where entrepreneurship comes in. Is the, the reason why I'm so passionate about being an angel investor and not like a VC, because I've been offered to work at, you know, call it six of the top 10 venture capital firms have offered me jobs. I, or tried to recruit me, um, I like to work in the angel stage because, as you saw when we were doing the interaction, when I meet somebody like Janelle and I see winner, 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 and I'm like, oh, that's exciting to me. Like, I know that person's going to win at something, and I need to be in business with them, and I want to win with them. So I had to, like, you know, you take stock of your life at different points, like when you fuck up or when you win, and... I took stock of my life a couple of times, uh, you know, in the past couple of years, and I was like, what do I love doing? I like winning, and I like supporting people who are changing the world. Okay, what's the best way to do that? Being an angel investor. And so now I've just organized my life around this premise of meeting founders, trying to figure out which ones are under-recognized, and being the person who writes the first check or the check when nobody else believes in them, because it's the most exciting check to write. And it's the smallest check, you know, 25K, 250K, a million, compared to what my contemporaries do, which is write $25 million checks or $2.5 million checks. But I find it super exciting. I love the fact that I was the third investor in Uber or the second investor in Thumbtack. That, to me, is the exciting moment, to believe in it when nobody else does.